Ever feel like uh, you could use a little ancient wisdom mm -hmm. to like navigate the chaos of modern life? Yeah. <laughs> well, today's deep dive is uh, taking us straight to 17th century Japan okay. with uh, Miyamoto Musashi's A Book of Five Rings. All right. We're talking way more than just, you know, epic samurai sword fights. Right. This is about like timeless strategy. Yay. And yeah. a way of life. Yeah. So, I mean, what makes Musashi so fascinating? Well, I think um, what makes Musashi so fascinating is that he wasn't just a legendary swordsman. Right, you know, you're right. With that whole, you know, two swords thing going on. Of course, got up two swords. Right, exactly. He was also a um, philosopher. Okay. Who really saw combat as a, as a pathway to, like, self-mastery. Okay. And his insights, I think they still resonate even, like, centuries later yeah. exactly and uh you know we're diving into excerpts from the book of five rings uh, okay. translated by victor harris great translation to like really unpack musashi's world yeah. i mean imagine you're in japan early 1600s okay samurai culture is like everywhere it's pervasive there's this strict social order yeah and warriors are expected to be like poets calligraphers Just right even carpenters mm -hmm. it's wild yeah it's this um it's that blend of like discipline, but also um, artistry. Okay. That really like defines this era of Japanese history. Okay. And I think it's really important to you know to remember that you know Musashi lived as a ronin, right, right. a masterless samurai. Okay. And and what that meant was that you know he was living in a time of like constant struggle, constant uncertainty. Yeah. And I think that really shaped his unique approach to strategy. Okay. Which wasn't just about like winning battles you know on the battlefield right but it was about um mastering oneself so speaking of self-mastery musashi keeps mentioning the uh way of the warrior right and it's about it's about way more than just being good with a sword right uh, absolutely i think one of the uh one of the most uh powerful statements that musashi makes is that the way of the warrior is resolute acceptance of death and now before you think that that means he's just like you know promoting recklessness like you know, just going out there and and, um, and and being crazy. Yeah, charging into battle, yeah. Right, exactly. He's actually talking about something much deeper. Oh, okay. He's talking about a profound awareness of of life's impermanence. Oh. Right, and it's this acceptance, this willingness to, like, confront mortality. Yeah. You know, yeah. head on, that allows the warrior to then act. Um, with clarity and courage. That's that's intense. It's like when you when you accept the possibility of like any outcome, mm. it frees you to to act decisively. Like you're not so paralyzed by fear. Precisely. And this this fearless mindset, you know, this acceptance of death, it it becomes a source of strength really for Musashi but, because it allows him to see opportunity where others only see danger. Okay, so we've got this like warrior philosophy as our kind of foundation here. Yeah. But Musashi also gets into some like seriously practical stuff about you know fighting techniques. Oh, absolutely. Right. This yeah. is where his uh, this is where his famous Niten Ichiru, the two sword style, comes in. Right. And this fighting style, it you know it's all about fluidity, adaptability, and it, it really um, exploiting your opponent's weaknesses. Mm. You know, finding those openings. Okay. And Musashi even compares it to um, to water. Okay. Which. Um, as he writes, adopts the shape of its receptacle. Right. Right? right. So he's not just talking about like physical strength here. Right. He's talking about cultivating a mind that can that can perceive and exploit opportunities um, as they arise, you know, in the moment. Reading through the water book section, like some of the techniques he describes are just they're fascinating. Yeah. Like the red leaves cut where you you disarm your opponent by like knocking their sword away. Right. It sounds straight out of like a martial arts movie. It does. <laughs> like, how would you even? Right. I don't know. It's very visual. Well, and I think that's I think that's the beauty of Musashi's approach is that he he really understood that true mastery in combat, um, it wasn't just about like brute force, right? Right. It was about using like your entire being, your body, your mind, your spirit, how, okay, to to gain that advantage. It's like it's like Musashi is saying, don't just like train your body to fight train your mind to to see the fight before it even begins exactly yeah and this brings us to um to a really i think intriguing concept that musashi emphasizes throughout the book and that is timing okay timing 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 he even says at one point there is timing in everything right 
And he's not just talking about being, you know, fast or slow, right? Yeah, right. He's really talking about understanding the rhythm of a situation. Okay. And and acting, you know, at that opportune moment. It's it's like that it's like that feeling when, you know, like you you nail like a perfect tennis serve. Right. Or or you you time your entrance into a meeting just right. Yeah. It's it's not just like what you know, it's it's like you're you're in tune with some kind of flow. Precisely. You're 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 riding the waves, so to speak. Yeah. And Musashi, you know, he takes this idea of timing even deeper with this concept of um, what he calls the void. The void. Okay, now that sounds that sounds pretty intense. Like, is this? Are we talking like some kind of mystical samurai meditation thing here? You know, it's well, it's it's not about like emptying your mind completely, right? Gross. It's, it's yeah. not like you know just blanking out. Right. It's think of it more like like clearing away the mental clutter. Oh no. Right. So all of the the preconceptions, the distractions, the anxieties, like all of that stuff that prevents us from from really like seeing the world with clear eyes. So it's so it's less about like becoming empty and more about kind of being present and open and and ready to respond kind of. Exactly. Exactly. You've you've hit the nail on the head, yeah. Oh. Um and and in fact, you know, Musashi writes in the void is virtue and no evil. Mm. Right. So it's about it's about achieving this state of mental clarity that allows you to then act um without hesitation or self-doubt. It, it reminds me of that saying, be like water, my friend. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. Adaptable, flowing, finding that that path of least resistance. Perfect analogy. Perfect analogy. Because, yeah. you know, Musashi, he, he believed that um, that by mastering one thing completely, mm -hmm. and for him it was swordsmanship. Right. But, but he says, you know, by mastering one thing, you could actually gain insight into all things. Mm -hmm. So... The principles of, of the void, they, they apply, you know, whether you're whether you're facing an opponent on the battlefield right. or or a challenge in your everyday life. So like how do we actually how do we actually cultivate this void state? Yeah, that's the that's the million dollar question, isn't it? It, it sounds like something that takes like years of of disciplined meditation, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean I, I don't think Musashi would, would give us a, a step by step guide. Right. Oh, you know, he'd probably just say something like, you know, discover it for yourself through practice. Right. But but he does he does emphasize um, the importance of continuous learning. Yeah. You know he he talks about studying the the ways as he calls them of all different professions. Okay. Um, and so for him, you know the the path to the void wasn't about like isolating yourself from the world. It was about engaging with it deeply. You know, constantly observing, constantly learning. So it's so it's about becoming like a student of life, always curious, always kind of seeking new perspectives. Yes, exactly. And it's and it's about, you know, pushing past our comfort zones. OK. You know, questioning our assumptions, being willing to to let go of, of outdated beliefs. You know, right. It's this continuous process of, of self-discovery and and refinement. This all this all sounds very like Zen. Was was Misashi like influenced by Zen Buddhism at all? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Zen philosophy was um, it was deeply ingrained in in samurai culture at the time. OK. Um, and and the emphasis on you know, mindfulness and discipline and this kind of like intuitive action, it it aligns perfectly with with Musashi's way of the warrior, you know? Right. It's it's amazing how these ideas from from centuries ago, from from like a completely different culture, you know, still like resonate so strongly today. Yeah, yeah. And and it, it speaks, I think, to the enduring power of Musashi's insights. Okay. But but I also think it's important to remember that, you know, a book of five rings, it it's not just about this kind of like lofty philosophy, right? Right. You know, Musashi also gets into some pretty, uh, pretty hardcore critiques of of other fighting styles. Oh yeah, that's right. You know, in the the wind book section in particular, he's like calling out other swordsmen like left and right, basically. Sounds like sounds like our guy wasn't afraid of a little controversy. Well, no, no, he certainly wasn't, and 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 I and I think you know, again. It's it's less about ego with him, you know. Right. It's more about I think emphasizing the importance of of having this kind of broad understanding, you know. Okay. He believed that that by studying the methods of others, even even your opponents, mm -hmm. you could actually refine your own techniques. You could learn to anticipate your opponent's weaknesses. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. <laughs> the classic strategy. It's like he's like if you want to be the best, you gotta you gotta study everyone, mm -hmm. even even the ones you disagree with. Uh, there's there's real wisdom in that. Oh, absolutely. And and you know Musashi, he he wasn't afraid 
to challenge like conventional wisdom. Right. You know, like the wind book, he, he criticizes schools that, you know, rely on like an excessive number of techniques <laughs> or, or overly rigid movements. Okay. You know, he calls it, he calls it, um, selling the way. Mm. Where where it's more about like, you know, Clips. prioritizing flashiness over like true effectiveness. Yeah, it's about it's about stripping away the the unnecessary, right? Yes, exactly. Getting down to like the core principles, kind of kind of like like what we're doing right now with this with this deep dive. Right. We're we're taking this like you know dense complex text yeah and we're, we're trying to like distill it down to its its most like potent elements yeah and in a world that's just like overflowing with information these days right exactly that skill the ability to just like discern what's essential right it's it's more valuable than ever i think so so we've we've covered a lot of ground here right yeah. we talked about musashi's life his philosophy his fighting techniques um his critiques of of other schools and then even this this idea of of the void right yeah it's a lot it's it's a lot to like digest it is for for someone listening who's thinking like okay this is this is all fascinating right but but like how do i how do I actually apply this to to my life? Right, right. Well, what would you say? You know, that's that's the question, isn't uh -huh. it? And, and you're right. I don't I don't think Musashi would um, would necessarily give us like a checklist, right? Yeah. He'd probably just you know challenge us to to find our own way. Right. Um, but if we had to like distill his wisdom down into like I don't know a, a few a few key takeaways, okay, I would it. say you know <laughs> cultivate that void mindset, right? So approach challenges with this kind of like clear and adaptable mind okay remember the importance of timing so observe sense the rhythm of a situation yeah. and then and then act decisively when the moment is right and and never stop learning yeah right the, the path to mastery it's it's a lifelong journey it's not a destination exactly it's about self-discovery beautifully beautifully put it, it strikes me that you know while musashi's uh words were written centuries ago about you know the art of swordsmanship they really do offer like a timeless blueprint i think mm. for for na navigating you know just the complexities of life itself yeah. you know it's it's about cultivating like clarity adaptability mm -hmm. and and like a deep understanding of of ourselves and the world around us absolutely yeah and i think that's that's what makes a book of five rings so enduring you know right it's not it's not just a a manual for combat right it's it's a guide to to living a more i think a more strategic a more intentional and and ultimately i think a more fulfilling life so as we as we wrap up this uh deep dive into the world of miyamoto musashi i'm i'm left with like this sense of awe for for his insights yeah. and and like a renewed commitment to to like cultivating that void state in in my own life if sure. if a if a 17th century samurai can like find wisdom in the in the midst of battle you know yeah. surely surely we can find it in the midst of our own you know modern challenges as well absolutely yeah <laughs> the wisdom's there for the taking thanks so much for watching we spend a lot of time putting these videos together so if you like what you saw go ahead and hit that subscribe button and give this video a like and a share to anybody you think might like it. And if you have any thoughts or suggestions on the video, go ahead and leave a comment. We make sure to read them all. Thanks, and see you next time.